Good morning. This is All India Radio Kohima. The morning news read by Sitang Mir. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired the second national conference of chief secretaries in New Delhi yesterday. In a tweet, Modi said, This is a wonderful forum to exchange views on important policy-related subjects and to strengthen team spirit to take India to newer heights. The conference focused at achieving rapid and sustained economic growth in partnership with the states. The idea behind the conference is that cooperative federalism is an essential pillar for the development and progress of new India. More than 200 people comprising representatives of the central government, chief secretaries and other senior officials of states, union territories and domain experts participated in the conference. Nagaland Chief Minister Nifurio said the state government is able to provide a stable, progressive and development-based governance due to the support of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Home Minister Amit Shah. Rio said this yesterday during the virtual launch of five projects by Union Home Minister in Jamagedima. He said PM Modi and Home Minister Shah had always stood by the people of the state and have never turned down any of the state's requests and requirements in the past and of now. Rio, while admitting that the state have many development deficiencies and pending cases, requested the Prime Minister to visit Nagaland and make announce the approval of the pending projects, lay foundation stone and also inaugurate some of the completed projects. He also said that the state government is keen on improving the quality of education and infrastructure of the state and expressed happiness that these five projects will benefit the citizens. Rio also exuded hope that under their present coalition government, the state would experience many good things, adding that the alliance of NDPP and BJP would get people's mandate in the forthcoming election. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Tagur has said the country's youth are emerging as pioneers and fast adopters of new technology. The minister was speaking at the Youth 20 India Curtain Razor event at Agashwani Rang Bhavan in New Delhi yesterday. On the occasion, Tagur launched the themes, logo and website of Y20 Summit. Youth 20Y20 is the official youth engagement group of G20. It provides a platform that allows youth to express their vision and ideas on the G20 priorities. Addressing the gathering, the minister called India as a nation of software and spirituality. He said, country's youngsters are driving the start-up culture and providing pragmatic solutions to the socio-economic problems. Calling Gen Z as the future of the world economy and humanity, he encouraged them to capitalize on India's G20 presidency by expressing their visions and ideas to the G20 leaders and built networks. Tagore said that today's youngsters are risk-takers and will not settle for the average. The minister added that they want to make an impact in the world right here and right now. India's growth in real gross domestic product GDP during 2022 to 23 is estimated at 7% compared to 8.7% in 2021 to 22. Real GDP or GDP at constant 2011-12 prices in the year 2022 to 23 is estimated at 157.60 lakh crore rupees as against the provisional estimate of G GDP for the year 2021 to 22 of 147.36 lakh crore rupees, released on 31st May last year. According to first advance estimates of national income 2022-23 released by National Statistical Office, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, the growth in nominal GDP during 2022 to 23 is estimated at 15.4% as compared to 19.5% in 2021 to 22. Kohima police has arrested one person on charges of kidnapping a truck driver near Peduja Bridge area. In a press release, the police stated that the accused person was identified as Nawaz Khan, a habitual highway robber and a self-styled tax collector for various outfits. The release stated that the Kohima police, upon receiving information of the kidnapping, promptly activated the various police teams to trace out the kidnapper extortionist. After thorough investigation, a special team of Kohima police led by STPO and Kohima rushed down to Dimapur after zeroing in on the suspect. It informed that after a pursuit, the vehicle of the suspect was intercepted at Nepali Posti Junction in Dimapur wherein the accused was apprehended and brought to Setsa Zabza Police Station, Kohima, for further legal actions. With that, we come to the end of morning news. Have a nice day.